Okay, so let's see. Should we give it a moment more? All right, so let me start screen sharing. And then whatever questions you guys have, let's utilize that Q&A on the bottom. And then I'll be able to answer those questions as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start screen sharing right now. I want you guys to first go on to my website, hold on. Let's, okay, there we go. So how you get on the website is you go to realfengshuisolutions.com and then forward slash soul blog. So if you're at the homepage, if you just go to realfengshuisolutions.com or if it's too long to type, just do realfengshui.com, R-E-A-L-F-E-N-G-S-H-U-I.com. And then once you're there, go to the soul blog and then just click on the eight mansions chart. So it's one, two, three, four, five, it's the six one down. So you go to the eight mansions chart and then just have this handy. And if you click on the JPEGs, they'll expand and become bigger. So just have these charts handy because at the end, when I teach you guys the system, um, we'll be able to use it. So it'll help you make more money You'll be able to negotiate deals easier, get new clients, new listings. So I want you guys to have these charts handy. So let me show you again how to do it. So you go to realfengshui.com. If you don't want to type out solutions, S-H-U-I.com, realfengshui.com. And then once you're at the homepage, just go to the soul blog. Once you're there, just go six one down, eight mansions charts. So just have this in the background ready to go. It'll be the last part of this lecture. Okay, so we're gonna start, and we're gonna start with the PowerPoint slide. Okay, so this is Feng Shui for Realtors. Let me just scooch this box over so I can still see what you guys have going on. I want to make sure that you guys are hearing everything. Okay. Okay. So is everyone good? Just give me like a thumbs up, some kind of symbol. So I know that everyone's awake and alive and doing well. You can do it under the Q and A section. Good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. All right. So let's get started. And just know under that Q&A section, as questions come up, you can ask me and I'll do my best to answer every question that you guys have. Okay, so this is called Feng Shui for Realtors. So it's specifically geared towards you guys because I want you guys to be able to maximize your time, obviously maximize your profits, get as many clients as you can, and then of course be of service to them and provide them a good service where they'll want to come back to you over and over again. So in Feng Shui for Realtors, so this is just my background. I have an MBA. I was in corporate America. I did finance. I did accounting and I couldn't stand it. I felt like a piece of my soul was dying every day. So I did what most sane, rational people do. I started taking Feng Shui classes, even though I know nothing about it, but I just had a feeling I needed to research and investigate what the energy of a home or business was all about. So I studied with different teachers and it wasn't until I landed with my feng shui master that I finally was like, yes, this works, this makes sense. So my goal today is to debunk all the myths that are out there. All the feelings that I had, like this sounds like baloney, this sounds like it could be legit, but I need more information about it. I'm gonna help you guys navigate through all that so that you understand what real practical classical feng shui is so that you can use it um, in a very rudimentary way. Obviously, this took me two years to study and I've been practicing for 12 years. So it is a lifelong study. It's not something where you can take a home weekend course and the art of tchotchke placement and you're like, voila, I can do feng shui now. It's not that simple. 
it's more complex. And that's why I'm excited that you guys are here because I'm gonna be able to explain to you guys how it really works and what goes into it. So you can see I've done different television shows. I did lectures at um, Own Studio with Oprah Winfrey. I've done lectures at Hilton and Highland. I've done them all over LA and Orange County and now I'm settled back into Orange County. So if you wanna read more about my background, you guys can go onto my website. I don't wanna waste your time with that. I just want to jump right into it. So what is feng shui? So feng shui is really pronounced feng shui. So if you have Asian clients and you want to impress them, um, this is the correct pronunciation. Um, most Americans, if you were to pronounce it the correct way, they would look at you funny. So everyone just says feng shui, which is fine, but just know that you will get, okay, so you still see the eight mansions chart. Hmm, let's see, let me stop sharing and then close that out. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think now you'll be able to see it. You guys good now? Can you see this chart? I mean the PowerPoint slide. Perfect. Okay, so feng shui, as it's pronounced, you guys can read this definition. I'm going to tell you the practical, grounded, down-to-earth definition that helped me to understand how energy works. So feng shui is basically energy. It's how the energy of a building, of an office, of a home, how it affects people, how it makes them feel, how it supports them with money, with health, with relationships, with stability. So sometimes people can walk into a home or business and they're like, oh, I love this place, I wanna come back. Other times people can walk in and they're like, oh, this does not feel right, I don't like it, I want to get out of here as fast as I got in. So that is the energy of that home or that business affecting your energy. And that is why you're having that reaction. So an example I like to give people is a lot of times with you guys, because you guys know when you walk into a home, if it's going to sell quickly or if it's going to take a long time, excuse me, take a long time to sell. You guys know that you don't necessarily know why but you understand the dynamics like, yeah, this will be easy. This one's going to be a little bit more time, more money, whatever. So my goal is by the end of this, you're going to understand why the ones that are more difficult, why it was more expensive, why it took more time. You're going to understand that. And you're going to understand ways that you can do to help remedy that or kind of fast track those homes. And then you're also going to understand why the homes that sold quickly, why they did, because we too are all about location, location, location. And as we move through this, you'll see different properties and those locations and why they're good and why they're not and different things you can do to speed up the sale or to make it better so that other people that come in there will have a good feeling when they walk in and they'll be like, yeah, this is my dream home. So basically the energy of a home or business, it affects us because energy resonates. So if you look at the law of resonance, whatever energy comes in contact with another energy, it starts resonating at that level. So if your home has the troublemaker energy and the troublemaker energy can cause issues with money, with health and relationships, at first when you move in somewhere, it takes about, I say six months for you to grab or to feel the energy of that home or business, things might be fine. And then maybe on the sixth month, you start feeling more lethargic or you have nightmares and you don't sleep as well, or you see your business is starting to go very up and down, it's volatile or you start seeing your relationship deteriorating, whether it's with your spouse or with friends or with coworkers. So I tell people, pay attention to your experiences when you're living in a home or working in a building. I always tell people, if you've been killing it in real estate and you still are, then don't change anything because it's obviously serving you. If you have moved into a new office or to new home and you previously were killing it and now you're not, what changed? What's different? And we're going to go through that so that you start understanding the different tools that you can use to help get yourself back to that place. So just know feng shui is about the energy in a home or business and how it affects people. And the categories in which affects people that we put everything into is relationships, love, um, 
money, and then health. So health, money, and relationships. So anything that's going on in your life will fall into one of those three categories. And that's what we're always looking at to improve, to make sure stay stable, or to make sure that it gets better. Now, an example that I like to give, and you guys are great at this, is everybody knows that business in a strip mall where maybe every year, every two years, it changes hands or it changes ownership or a business closes and then a new business comes up. That has to do with the feng shui or the energy of that business. I had a client in Fountain Valley. They had um, a popular retail chain. I don't want to say what the name of the chain was, but this chain had changed hands many times. And so my client contacted me and they're like, you know, me and my partner, we just took over this business and it's not doing well. Like, can you come help us and tell us what's going on? So the home, the business was situated on a T juncture. And when we go through this, I'm going to show you what that is specifically. You'll see pictures of it. And so I told them for a business, this usually indicates like high employee turnover, a lot of customer complaints, a lot of tension, energy, people being dissatisfied, negative Yelp reviews, um, you know, business coming and going and not being able to keep repeat business. And they both said that that's exactly everything they had experienced. So I always tell people, pay attention to your experiences in your home, in your business. Have things been going well? Have things been going up and down or have things been going poorly? So if they're going well, then you're probably, your feng shui or your energy is probably set up really well to support you, which is excellent. If it's up and down, maybe you just need a couple little tweaks. And if it's really poor, then we need to do an overhaul and really shift that energy so that it supports you and the human experience. And the human experience is health, money, and relationships. So we use this in China, they call it a living science, and it does involve furniture setup. But the most important thing, and you guys will see that as we go through this, the most important thing is location. So where the building, the home, the business is oriented, um, direction, what direction the home or building faces and the orientation. Like, is there mountains around it? Are there busy roads around it? Is there a freeway? And as we go through this, you'll see the different examples that I give for all of this. So just know that yes, furniture placement is important. The internal layout is important, but the most important thing is location, direction, and orientation. Because if that's off, we can't change it. I can't pick up a building and move it. Whereas I can pick up a piece of furniture or your bed in your bedroom and move that, right? So that's why we're always going after the environment, the external first, and then we go into the inside of the home and see what we can do with the furniture arrangement or with the layout to do, to make sure that the energy inside the home supports people as well as the energy on the outside. And because I came from finance and accounting, I always tell people that feng shui or energy is a natural form of capital. So it's very much like having a 401k or an IRA or investing in the stock market. Um, when you do that, it will pay you dividends in the future and set you up for retirement or for a better life. And the same thing with the energy in a home or business. When you feng shui your home or your business, it will set you up to keep you stable or to keep increasing your money flow, your relationships and your health. So I think it's extremely important. And I think as you guys go through this, you'll see how important it is. So it's been around thousands of years, but the way we practice it today, you know, with the surgeons of buildings and roads and, you know, um, major landforms that we can kind of anticipate where homes are going to be placed. It's been around about 1500 years. So of course this method, and this is classical authentic feng shui, and I'll go through like the faking, the fake brand feng shui, but classical real feng shui is from China. It's extremely popular in Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan. The reason why is because in 1944, when Chairman Mao took over China, he made all the Chinese metaphysics illegal. That means feng shui, that means acupuncture, um, ziwei doshu, Chinese astrology, um, that means the herbal, like the Chinese doctors, all that was deemed to be of old 
um, pastimes. And so he wanted to bring China modern. So he made that all illegal. What, what all the famous feng shui masters did is they fled. And so they fled, they went to Malaysia, they went to Hong Kong, they went to Singapore, Taiwan, and other parts of Asia where they can openly practice and not be, you know, scared that they're going to get arrested for doing this. So just know that it did start in China, but because of Chairman Mao taking over and making it illegal, people fled. And so that's why it became popular in all of Asia. It's used by tons of business moguls. And just know that a lot of people aren't admitting that they use classical feng shui. And the reason is, is because their businesses are conservative in nature and they don't want to turn off part of that population that's not privy to the information and them thinking, oh, it's weird. I'm not going to give this weird CEO my money or my business. So just know a lot of people are using this and I've had a lot of Fortune 500 CEOs as my clients that I would have never thought would have been interested in this, but they keep everything on the down low. You have to sign NDAs um, just because they're afraid that people might find out and they're not as progressive or they're not as knowledgeable. Um, and they might think it's weird and they might, you know, not want to give that company their business. So just know a lot of people are doing this. I've had doctors, lawyers, any single type of person, developers as my clients that you could think of, or maybe that you'd be surprised would be interested in this are. So the more famous ones are Steve Wynn and you can see the Wynn Hotel there. So the Wynn Hotel was um, feng shui by a famous master in Hong Kong. So the shape of the building, the orientation, the direction where the doors are, where that lake is, um, the waterfalls, all that has been specifically and strategically oriented to benefit the owner and, of course, to make the guests feel really good and want to stay there and want to come back and frequent the Wynn Hotels. So just know when you walk in there, I tell people um, oftentimes that you know, they'll want to go gambling. These places, a lot of the places in Las Vegas on the strip are feng shui. So they're, you know, obviously feng shui for the owner so that they can make more and more money. You know, people do sometimes get lucky, but just know that at the end of the day, it is a business and that's what they're trying to do is to make money and they want to keep making money. Um, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Oprah, Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, and Disney. So with businesses like Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, and Disney, the reason why they're using classical feng shui is because they wanted to develop a presence in Asia. So maybe they took their business model and they went global or international or multinational. They went into these cultures thinking, oh, I'm just going to set up shop. Well, it doesn't work like that because you have to follow their customs and their cultures and their tradition. So in order to do business in these places, you have to incorporate classical feng shui into the building and the design. But they loved it so much that they brought it back to America and incorporated it here too. So it's kind of a testament how people don't necessarily know what it is in the beginning, but then once they use it, they love it, and then they start utilizing it. And what's interesting, in 2008, when we had the financial crash, um, when other banks were merging, or they were shutting down or, you know, there was government bailouts. The two banks that are still here are Wells Fargo and Chase. So I always tell people that feng shui isn't <clears throat> the end all be all, but it helps you weather the storm, right? So you're always going to have to experience things in life. But if you're in a crisis like we are now, at least it helps you weather the storm so that you either maintain status quo or you can slowly continue to increase or you really soar. So it kind of is a, I like to tell people it's kind of like it helps you so that, you know, the rug doesn't get pulled out from underneath you, right? So it gives you a little bit of stability. It gives you a little bit of um, backing so that you don't feel overwhelmed by what's going on in the economic world. And especially now with um, this virus and how it's affecting our economy. So in classical feng shui, we always use a compass. Um, the reason why we use a compass is yes, location is very important, but as I stated earlier, direction and orientation is extremely important. So anyone that practices real feng shui will always use a compass. We need more than just the orientation of the building. So if someone says, oh, that building faces north, we need to know what 15 degree increment in north it faces because there are what we call flying stars charts. And it's based on the specific degree that a building faces. These charts are kind of like 
a natal chart or an astrological chart or your birth chart, but for the building or the home. It tells us how people will be affected with money, with relationships and with health. And then by incorporating your birthday information, which we're gonna utilize those charts at the end, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, then we can really get a detailed picture of what person's gonna be affected with health or what person's gonna be affected with relationships or money. And then what can we do to change it so that we can help eliminate anything negative that um, they might have to deal with. So it's super important to always use a compass. And when I teach you guys how to use the system based on your birthday, you'll want to use your iPhone compass. So the uses of classical feng shui are endless. Um, we use it to evaluate an existing home or business and make recommendations. We use it to design new homes or remodel existing homes or businesses. Um, you can use it like to predict to predict the luck or fortune that people will have. But not only would you predict that, you would also make changes so that if there is something negative, you can fix it. Um, just adjusting the energy and the site to really enhance so that people can benefit from every aspect of their life. And then, of course, we've used it for um, master plan communities, urban development, um, shopping centers. I've done, you know, the whole gamut. Uh, most recently, I worked in, on a master plan community in Irvine. I think it was like a community of condos. Um, so you can use it for anything. You can use it for anything brand new, new, existing, um, remodeling. So there's no limits to how you can use classical feng shui. Now, not all feng shui is created equal. And this is where I'm going to come in to debunk some myths. So if you look at this is called the Bagua. This is what we call a Western Bagua. So when feng shui was introduced to America about 70 years ago, people are like, this is cool. This is interesting. There's something to this, but it's very complicated. So then a couple of people came in and they're like, we're going to use a simplified watered down cookie cutter, one size fits all method so that anyone can do this. You can just like pull it up on the internet and say, okay, yes, Every home faces north, every person is the same. This is what you need to do in every single corner of your home. Well, the good thing is we know every home does not, or building does not face north, and every person is not the same. So when people are first introduced to feng shui, if this is their first introduction, it's very hit or miss. And people will be like, this sucks, it doesn't work. Um, it sounds fun, but it didn't really do anything for me. And the reason why it's because it's too generalized. It's like a one size fits all. It's like if I were to give you a shirt and it was one size fits all and you're extremely petite and it's like a bag on you, or I gave you a one size fits all and you're a little bit bigger and it's tight on you, right? So we're not all the same. That's why it's super important that we know the direction, the orientation, the location of the building and then people's birthdays. And as we go on, I'll explain that more. So classical feng shui has nothing to do with colors. So the only colors that really do matter that are important are red or black. And the reason why is because those are activators of energy. So if you're going to paint an entire wall red or an entire wall black, then that's something to look at. But most people, especially now, don't do that. Everything's very um, muted. It's very neutral color palettes. So we usually don't worry about that. And if you're not going to use a wall full of black curtains or a wall full of red curtains, again, we don't worry about it. We do not use bamboo flutes. Um, a lot of Western people say if you hang bamboo flutes on those beams and the ceiling, it'll help to cut the energy. It won't do anything um, except you'll have, you know, if you like the way it looks, um, a new decor added to your home or your business. Um, we don't use crystals. So the deal with crystals is this. In order to have crystals shift the energy of a home or a business, it has to be in scale and proportion to that home or business. So like if you have a 2,000 square foot home and you want crystals to help shift the energy in your home, you'd have to get like a four or five foot geode. And those are mined in Brazil and they're hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
So it's too cost prohibitive and it's not anything I would ever recommend for my clients because it's too difficult to get and it's too expensive and it's gonna be out of 95% of everyone's budget. So if you like crystals, cause you like to use them like on your person or you like to create like a little circle of crystals, that is fine. But just know that like your little four inch crystal isn't going to do anything in a 2000 square foot home. Like it will literally turn to dust and ash, like the fires before it shifts or change the energy in your home, because everything has to be in scale to size and proportion. Right? So you can have crystals for your personal healing, no problem. But if you're using them in a home to shift that energy, they have to be those huge geodes, which are too expensive and too cost prohibitive. We don't um, use purple pillows. Like there's no such thing as feng shui decor. I know people, um, go on websites and want to buy the little tchotchkes or the trinkets that they sell and it looks so cute and fun. Um, but just know you can have those in your home, but you're not shifting or changing that energy in your home. There's other ways to do that and I'm going to explain that to you as we move along. Um, we don't feng shui cats or dogs, but I will say this. If the feng shui in your home or business is good or supportive, you will see your animals experience that good energy. So like if you have an animal that is normally high strung or um, is anxious or barks a lot, if the home has good energy, it will have a very calming or soothing effect on them. So I tell people pay attention to kids and to animals because they're more sentient than adults. So how the energy affects them first is eventually how it's gonna affect you. So if you have a child that is uh, more docile, more calm, then the energy in your home is probably more docile and calm. If you have a child that's like a wild, you know, savage lunatic running around being crazy, there's probably something up with the energy in your home. It affects them first because they're not as cynical as we are, they're more sentient, they haven't been kicked down by life the way that we have. So um, that's why for them, it affects them first. And I always say pay attention to your kids and your pets to see how the energy in your home is flowing and how it's supporting. Now, we don't do feng shui plants, but I will say that plants are excellent because they do absorb negative energy. They do absorb toxic chemicals. They're a natural air purifier. And that's been scientifically proven. That's not a feng shui thing. So absolutely plants are great. But again, you have to have a balance. So I've seen a lot of um, like Gen Zers and young millennials who are like plant people, like they've replaced like cat people. That's not ideal either. You don't want to have too many plants because then it'll make your home very yin. So you want it the right balance, right? So we're always looking for balance. We're always making sure that everything flows well. So you can have a plant in each room. We don't just want a room full of plants, if that makes sense. Um, we don't utilize fish tanks. Uh, we don't do paintings or decors. A lot of times people are like, oh, can I have a water painting here instead of having an actual fountain? No, it doesn't do the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We don't do the Chinese flu dogs or the frogs with the coins in them. Um, by the front door to bring in money or the Buddhas, you can have all those things. So I'm not trying to like, you know, diss all these things. I love them. I have a Buddha in my house. I have the elephants. I have all that stuff, but that's not how you shift energy. These are just tchotchkes or trinkets that people have been programmed because they take it from the Chinese culture and they're like, oh, this is what feng shui is. It's not. So just know that's why I'm trying to debunk these myths until I can build you up and I'm gonna to explain to you what real feng shui is. We don't use bagua mirrors. Um, we don't care about the chandeliers, you know, as long as it's not anything crazy, like, you know, stabbing um, light fixtures and then the house numbers. So the deal with the house numbers is this, four in um, Cantonese is similar to death. So a lot of Asian or Chinese people do not like the number four in an address or in a listing price because they think it's a bad omen. For feng shui purposes, it is not. It's fine if you have the number four in your address or in your listing price. But what I will say is if you're working with an Asian clientele or population, respect their culture. And if you're trying to sell a home in Irvine where there's a lot of Asian people, take the number four out of your listing price. So the best numbers to use are eight, nine, six, one. Right. So like if a home is um, 1.4 million, change it to like 
six million or one point you know eight or one point one million whatever right so use like the good numbers in that way but just know it's not a feng shui thing so if you have the number four in your address it doesn't mean your home has bad energy absolutely not um but it is a it's kind of like us when we don't like friday the 13th we think it's a bad omen it's the same thing so they think that the number four is a bad omen and that bad things can happen but it's not true in terms of feng shui so just know that this is a western bagua so what they believe is every building faces north every single person is the same so they believe that you have a wealth corner and a fame corner and a children corner and this is what I have to say about it. If everyone had a wealth corner, we would all be billionaires. Excuse me, if, if we all had a fame corner, we would all be famous, right? So that's why this doesn't really hold very much weight because some homes do have that energy, absolutely, depending on the direction they face, when people moved in and people's birthday, of course, and there are ways to activate that energy. But if you just take this and try to orient your home based on this, you're going to utilize it and be like, this sucks. It doesn't work because it's too generalized. There's too many other factors that we have to consider in order for this to be um, something that could benefit people. So just know this is Western or Americanized feng shui. I'm going to talk to you guys about Eastern or classical real feng shui. Okay, so these are the myths. You guys have the list here. Okay, so our favorite types of building are square or rectangular shaped buildings. The reason why is because energy flows the most evenly and the most uniformly. So when a building is square or rectangular, the energy comes in and then it's able to take on what we call the low shoot flight path. We don't like weird or odd shaped buildings. So we don't like um, triangle lots or buildings. We don't like circular buildings um like l-shaped or u-shaped buildings where it cuts the building off we say the heart of the home is missing so families in those homes may not be as tight you might be more prone to divorce um homes that are very narrow so homes that are three to four times longer than they are wider and i've seen this like in condos like in huntington where the lots are smaller and they're trying the builders trying to get more properties on that lot because it's like oceanfront that usually means you can make money in those homes, but you have a hard time holding on to it. So it's a situation where you're living paycheck to paycheck, right? So you can make a lot of money, but you know, one month maybe your um, pipes in your house burst. And for some reason, your homeowner's insurance policy doesn't cover it. And then you have to pay for it. And you're like, great, one more expense. Or, you know, you had a hidden expense. <clears throat> excuse me, with your taxes that you didn't know about. You're like, great, another expense. So it's like you can never get ahead, but you're always breaking even. So I don't, we call those homes squeeze chi. Um, if you can avoid living in a home like that, better. If not, there are different things that you can do to help um, improve the energy flow and to help improve your money flow as well. So just know we love square and rectangular shaped homes. In feng shui, anytime you get into a situation where the building is too avant-garde or it's too um you know outside of the box like people love um a lot of you know these like new age novu designs i always tell people just stick to a normal like regular home on a flat piece of lot because whenever you start getting too avant-garde or the architects go crazy with the design you can start running into problems energetically and i'm going to show you guys some examples of those homes so I always tell people, just keep it simple, keep it nice. You can have a, you know, if you want a large home, if that's your thing, you can have a nice large home that's square, rectangular shaped. Um, you don't have to get crazy like with the design. Okay, and then another thing we like, and I know a lot of times um, realtors cringe when I tell them this, is we love homes that are nestled in between other homes. So like this home right here has a home to its right, to its left and then behind it, and then there's nice landscaping in the front. The reason why is because when the energy comes into the property, it can flow and stay on the property. So if you're living on a corner lot, and there's like a road on one side and then a road in the front, so you're that corner home, people love it because they're like, oh, I don't have a neighbor on one side of me. 
Well, energetically, that's not ideal because depending on what side of the road it's on, it'll affect either a female or male. So for example, if you look out your front door and you're on a corner lot, so your back is to your front door, you're staring at the street. If the road is on the left side, that will influence men in the home, the males. So if you have a single female living there and she wants to get married or meet a husband, she'll have a harder time finding and keeping a man. It can also indicate um, financial issues, especially for men living there, but also women. If you have a road and you're on the corner and it's on the right side of your home, as you look out the front door, your back is to the door you're looking at the street, that can affect females in the home. So if you have a single man living there and he wants a wife or a girlfriend, he'll have a harder time finding and keeping a woman. And then um, it can also indicate authority or um, being bullied at work or people not respecting you at work. So that's why we like homes that are nestled in between other homes. If you are on a corner property or your client is, you have to make sure that they have like high retaining walls um, maybe if they don't want retaining walls, then solid fencing or solid thick landscaping or a combination of all three. Okay, so now I'm going to go into properties on the outside that may be difficult to sell and list, properties that have high turnover in a neighborhood, and then different things that you can do to kind of speed up the sale of the home. So the number one property that if you ask any Asian person and they're going to, um, run away from these types of homes and they're going to say, I don't even want to see the property or T-juncture homes. So T-juncture homes are homes that face a road. So facing a road is excellent. We like that. What we don't like is having another road dead end at the front door. So it forms a T to your home. These homes indicate too much energy. So too much energy is coming at this home. It can make people feel unstable. It can indicate a lot of fighting, high blood pressure, anxiety, um, divorce, uh, money issues. So an example that I like to give is using our own bodies um, and putting that into perspective of how the energy of a home works. So when you're looking at the energy of your body and you think about the times that you feel best is when your energy is balanced, right? So you don't have too much energy, but you don't have too little energy. So if you have too little energy, you'll feel depressed or lethargic or tired or unmotivated. And then if you have too much energy because you drank too much coffee or you popped some kind of pill that made you too hyper, it'll be hard to focus. You'll feel like a chicken with your head cut off. You'll have neurotic, you know, manic energy. So that's not good either. So we're always trying to find the right balance of energy in your body. Same thing in a home. A home with too much energy is that neurotic, crazy, manic, chicken with a head cut off energy. These are the homes where um, there's the highest turnover, meaning if it's a rental, people will usually move in for a year and then move out after a year or every couple of years. Um, if it's a home that people buy and sell, it'll be on the market every couple of years, every few years. Um, if it's a home where a couple live there, it's usually a home they're moving out because they're divorcing or they're breaking up. It's also the home that you will see on the news where someone crashed into their living room. They came careening into someone's living room. Um, and people are always like shocked, like, why would that happen? Even though they could see the headlights of cars, you know, wanting to make a right or a left at the street every single night. So this is what I tell people with these properties that I'm going to explain to you guys right now. Um, in general, you want to avoid these properties because what happens is with feng shui or energy, we can take these properties and make them better, but then you're going to be at an even level playing field with everyone else. You want to find a good property and make it excellent. Okay. But if you're selling these homes or you live in this home, you're not going to deny a sale. You're not going to say, no, I can't take your property. It's a T-juncture. So I'm going to give you tips and tricks to help um, improve the energy. But just know my ideal for you guys to succeed in life and to do better is to avoid these properties living in them if you can. Okay. So I'm going to give you tips, but just know in general, my heart of all heart, I don't want you living in a property like this, just because I know what it does to people long-term, even if you do try to remedy it, but for your purposes and for selling these properties and for making money, um, the most ideal thing is in the front here, 
in order to slow down how the chi or the energy comes from this road. So envision this road like a river, right? So if it was a river, where would the river dump out on this house? So all the water would just be bombarding this house. And that's what's happening with the energy. So we need to slow down how the energy flows to the property. So in the front here, you need like a three foot, four foot stucco or brick wall. Something so it slows down the chi or the energy, or if you envision it like a river, the water from coming onto the property. Um, I know that there's a lot of associations in Orange County that we have to deal with and the HOAs and the CCNRs, I get that. So try to do whatever you can. I call it a workaround. Like if they don't let you do a stucco or a brick wall, see if they'll let you do a fence, but it has to be a solid fence, like a wooden fence or those um, white plastic ones that are solid. If they don't let you do that, see if they'll let you do a thick wall of shrubs or bushes that will act as a barrier to slow down how the chi or the energy comes to the property. So you figure out what you can and can't do depending on what the neighborhood is or what the restrictions are, and that's what you do. You encourage your client to do that so that you can sell this property quickly. Because if not, this will probably be a property that sits for a while, which is not ideal because there's probably carrying costs for the owners and then there's advertising and marketing costs for you guys as the realtor. So you wanna make sure that your barrier, whether it's a solid wall of shrubs, stucco wall, brick wall, wooden wall, um, it's in the front here for sure, so that it slows the cheer, the energy coming in from that road. Um, you want it on the side here and then on the side there too. So that when people walk in, all this is protected and all, the front door won't be slammed with all that energy. That will help to speed up the sale of these homes or to get a sale on this home. Okay, so I definitely recommend doing that and encouraging your clients to invest some money in doing that so that they can sell these properties quicker. Okay, this you guys already know. Um, homes that are next to a freeway or busy roads. So usually the price is reduced to accommodate for um, backing up to a freeway or to a road because it's not ideal. The reason why it's not ideal is think of this freeway as like a rushing river. And in Orange County, LA County, there's traffic all the time. Like you can never not have traffic. The only time I've never seen traffic was during the beginning of COVID. You could get from Orange County to LA in about 35 minutes, depending on which part of Orange County you were in. It was unbelievable. But I mean, we're never gonna see that again. So just know that there's always traffic in Orange County and LA County. So a home that backs up to a freeway is like living, um, you know, with a rushing river behind you. The energy is not staying on your property, it's fleeing. So it's fleeting onto that busy road, which usually indicates money loss, people behaving badly in these homes, um, anxiety not being able to think clearly, like scattered thinking. People don't sleep well in these homes. So ideally I tell people to avoid these homes, but if you're selling this home or if you live in a home like this, you need to reinforce it or back it up. And how you would do that is either stucco wall, like in the backyard, a solid wood fence, um, solid thick landscaping um, as much as you're able to, um, and that will help slow down so that the energy that comes to your property stays on your property, it kind of creates like a barrier, like a compound around your property. So when the energy comes to your property, it's not being taken away by that busy freeway. It'll actually stay on your property. And that energy is what gives people luck with money, with health and relationships. So we want it, right? So again, we don't want too much energy, like in the property, the T-juncture, and we don't want too little energy, like in homes that back next to a freeway or um, a busy road. So think of it this way. Usually people will buy these properties that are next to a busy road because um, it's more of an incentive cost wise, right? Like there's a neighborhood that people desire to be in, but they maybe can't afford to be in that neighborhood unless their home backs up to a busy road or a freeway. So they'll make concessions and they'll be like, okay, we'll be here for a couple of years and then we'll um, be able to upgrade and go down the block or whatever so that our home doesn't back up to a freeway. Well, what people don't realize happens is, you know, after a couple of years, your business might drop or you might start feeling health issues or, you know, other things that happen because the energy of this home isn't being supported and it's not supportive of the occupants living here. 
Um, sorry, I was just reading a comment from someone, making sure that everyone's okay. So, um, ideally, you want to make sure that the home is supported from every direction, right? So either the stucco wall, solid wood fence, or thick landscaping. And the same thing with busy roads. Like if your home backs up to Culver or Jeffrey, um, you want to encourage your clients to put as much protection as possible so that um, the energy isn't being carried away and that you can sell the property faster as well. Um, an example I give to, do you guys remember in the 80s? I don't know um, how old you guys are, but in the 80s, I was living in Irvine and our home was in University Park next to the freeway. And I remember me and my sister being terrorized. We would go sleep together at night and it was in the middle of the summer, it was hot. We didn't have air conditioning at that time, so we would sleep. We couldn't sleep with the windows open because during that time, the Night Stalker was in the area, Richard Ramirez. And his whole thing was he went to Irvine, Mission Viejo, like he went up and down Orange County, but he would always go after homes that were by a freeway. And that's where the people behaving badly comes in. The reason why is because it's a quick way in and a quick way out. So that's why I always tell people, if possible, stay away from the busy roads and freeways. If you can't, I get it, but do the things that I recommended to help speed up the sale or to try to get out of these properties. Okay, so this one's kind of weird. Homes that have um, the road that's higher than the roof of the house. Um, these homes can usually indicate money issues or um, your business dropping off. And the reason why is if you look at this home, it kind of looks like it's in a pit. And so we call that like literally a money pit. So you want your home to always be um, level to the road. So when you get to your front door, you don't want to step down underground and you don't want to have to climb too many flights of stair to get to your front door either. So you always want to be leveled to the road. If not, it usually indicates money issues. Another thing that's an issue with these types of homes is that cars could lose control and crane and end up on the roof of your house. Um, so you want to make sure that there's this amount of landscaping that this property has is excellent. You want either thick landscaping, stucco walls, or um, you know, solid fencing to help protect and secure these homes. But ideally, I would avoid these homes, but if not, those are some of the remedies you can do. Okay, and then the main or front door. You always want your front door to face the road. I know some people live in apartments. I know they live in condos, and that's not always possible. That's okay, but in general, your front door should face the road, and it shouldn't be obstructed. So like in this example right here, this is um, a neighborhood in Santa Monica, north of Montana. A lot of celebrities live here. This is one of the original homes in the neighborhood. Most of the homes here have been torn down and the huge like McMansions have been built up. So the issue with this home is um, all this landscaping is blocking the front door. It's either 10 feet or less of the front door and that's why you can't see the front door. And they probably did it because there's a lot of paparazzi that go into this neighborhood so they wanted privacy. They didn't want to be seen off the street, which I get. That's fine. However, all this landscape, you have to pull it back to where the sidewalk is because your front door needs at least 10 feet on the inside and to outside of unobstructed walking so the energy can come in, right? So you don't want a tree right at your front door. You don't want all this vegetation and landscaping right at your front door. So my solution for these people would be um, to pull all this out towards the sidewalk so that the energy can now flow in unobstructed. So you need 10 feet clearance on the outside and inside of your property where the front door is. If not, it'll be difficult to see um, increases in promotions for your career. Um, you'll find it difficult to um, increase your salary or your money flow. So it's all about career and money. So make sure that the front door isn't obstructed on the inside and outside. And then on the converse of that, so too much landscaping isn't good either. So this is like a little 900 square foot bungalow. It has too much landscaping on it. We call this choking chi and it usually indicates like depression or health issues. So this is an easy solution. You just have the client like cut everything back so you can let some of the sun back in. So you don't want too much landscaping, but you don't want too little landscaping. So everything is always about finding that balance. 
Um, and you know when you have the right balance. And the reason why you know is because you guys can walk into a house and be like, yeah, it's gonna sell, or no, it's not gonna sell. And so hopefully these little tips and tricks will help to fast track to whatever your goal is of those businesses. So extreme slopes. So when you live in mountainous areas, so like Newport Coast or Laguna Beach, or in LA, Pacific Palisades or Malibu, you have to be careful where you're oriented or where the property is located. Um, because extreme drop-offs on the sides or in the back can usually indicate money loss. If the extreme drop-off is in the backyard, it's like corporate takeovers. Um, so you wanna make sure that your property is surrounded again. So you have like a little compound around your property so that if you envision energy like water, anytime you're hosing, if the water is like running down the hill or running off the backyard into a cliff, the same thing is happening with your energy in the home. And if your home doesn't have energy, it's usually money issues or health or relationship issues. So we wanna make sure we secure those properties so that the energy stays on the property. So how do we do that? Well, in this example right here with the high rise, you can do thick, um, <coughs> excuse me, landscaping around the building, because that usually is a more cost effective way to help remedy the situation. Um, stucco walls, solid um, fencing. So chain link fences don't work. Those wrought iron fences don't work. Because if you envision energy like water, you can just hose through a wrought iron fence or hose through a chain link fence. Same thing, energy will just run right out. So you want it to be solid, thick, and closed. And that will help to retain the energy on people's properties. Okay. Okay, so homes that are located badly. So homes that are near um, graveyards, police stations, excavation sites, um, cemeteries, those are all properties that I tell people to pay attention to and to try to avoid. So I'm just going to answer this question really quick because it's five of. So people are saying they have to log off at 10. So um, if you sign up, um, let me just stop this for a second. If you sign up on my website for... Here, I'll screen share this with you, hold on. If you sign up on my website and add yourself to the email, um, if you're interested in um, this lecture, I can send it to you. So just add yourself on here and then I'll see your email pop up and then I can add you on and send you the rest of this lecture. I have it in a video format as well. So um, if you have to go, I totally get it. I want to respect everyone's time. And then also if you sign up here, um, I will raffle off either my book. I wrote a book, it's called Hollywood's um, Feng Shui Nightmares. I just feng shui the homes of famous celebrities that died tragically um, and just you know describe the different things that happened and what they could have done to fix it. Or I'll give you one of my teacher's books and I'll just pick it randomly. So if you sign up here on my website, um, we can do that. And then you can also send me an email if you don't wanna sign up and you want the, the um, lecture and I'll put it in the chat right here. It's just jennifer at realfengshui.com. So let me stop this sharing and then I'll just add it into the chat. <clears throat> So under the chat, I'll just put in my email and then we'll go back to this. And I'm gonna go back into it and then I'll answer your question about the cemetery. Okay, so let's see. I wish I could do just like one. Okay, so okay, it's not letting me. Okay, here I'm gonna open up a word thing, and then you can find it. If you want to buy the book Hollywood's um, Fatal Feng Shui, you can buy it on Amazon, and it's just by me, Jennifer Bonetto. 
So I'm just going to type in my email so you guys can see it right now. It's jennifer at realfengshui.com. R-E-A-L, F is in Frank, E-N-G-S-H-U-I. Also, if you go on my website, there's a contact us and you can email me through there too. Okay, it's taking a while. Hold on. Okay, just go on the website. Here, let's stop this. So just go on the website right here. Just do contact us. You can email me through there. Just put in all your information and you can email me through there. Jennifer at realfengshui.com. It's all in there. Okay, so let me stop this share and then go back into the PowerPoint. Okay, so if you're situated next to um, a police station, a graveyard, excavation site. So here's the thing, if you're, you have to look at the police station and how busy it is. If you're in a police station in Irvine, you're fine because there's nothing going on in Irvine. Like if you get pulled over by the cops, um, it's like five cops that pull you over. So just know that if you get pulled over in a police station, um, if you live next to a police station in Irvine, you're fine. If you live next to a police station in downtown LA, um, East LA, whatever part of town has a lot of crime or a lot of incidences of, um, you know, just criminal activity, then it's something to be aware of. So the thing with the cemeteries is it's dead or dying energy. So the chi is dead and we need vibrant yang energy to be able to survive, to be able to have our goals come to fruition. So there's these homes in Corona Del Mar, they're gorgeous. One of my clients um, lived there. I think they're, um, there's some like condos and apartments and some actual homes. And she absolutely loves it because it's very quiet and very peaceful. And what I tell her and others, yes, because everyone there is dead. So there's nothing going on. So if you live next to a cemetery, a police station, a church, um, you wanna block it off from the view of the home. So again, using the landscaping, either trees or shrubs or bushes, um, retaining walls, wood fences, anything to kind of block off the view so that you don't, you're not influenced by that yin or dying energy. And so that your property has its own little compound, its own little energy that it can thrive from. Um, and then there was a question, how far does the cemetery need to be from your property? You have to be able to see it in view of your property. So if it's like two miles away and you can't see it, it doesn't matter. It has to be in view of your property and that's when you would try to block it off. And the same thing with the police station or like if you have a construction site going on, try to block off the view of what's going on over there so that you can kind of, um, you know, keep the integrity of the energy on your property um, as being, you know, its own. And then backing up, if your home backs up to a train track, it's worse than backing up to a freeway, especially if it's a moving or working train track. If it's not, then it's no problem. But if it's a working train track, it's worse than a freeway. Because if you see, you know, like the velocity, the veracity of a train when it comes by, it shakes up the earth or the, it like scrambles up the chi or the energy in the earth. So ideally avoid these properties, if not, um, then you're going to want to make sure you have a retaining wall. Um, I don't think that thick landscaping or a wood fence is enough. You need a retaining wall. I had a client in Carlsbad, her home backed up to the freeway and she had a hard time selling. Um, so, you know, she had to spend some money and get the retaining wall and then she was able to sell her property. And then homes that back up to these electrical pylons or these transmission lines, um, it's not ideal. Because if you look at the studies from the World Health Organization, if you live like right next to this, um, it's been shown short term that it can cause like headaches, colds, medium term, it can cause like anxiety, sleep issues, and then long term, it can um, mutate cells, um, which is cancer. So in general, I tell people to avoid being right next to a transmission line. Um, there's different devices on the market. One is called EarthCalm that you can plug into your home and it grounds the energy in your home and protects you from those transmission lines and Wi-Fi and the computers and the cell phone towers, all that. It'll ground the energy in your home and then within a hundred feet of the perimeter. And it's called EarthCalm. 
So that I would recommend. There's um, some homes. Okay, you guys know in Irvine, across from Houston's. So it's Jamboree, and I think Michelson or Jeffrey. I don't know. You guys know it's across from Houston's on Jamboree. There's like an apartment complex. And if you're driving on Jamboree going towards the 405 freeway, so you're headed east, on the right side, before you make that turn to go um, right and then to go left into Houston's or Mother's or wherever you're going in there, if you look, look on the right, behind the trees, there's a transmission tower there. I would not be living in those apartments. It's too much energy going to those properties. So like if you have a telephone pole outside your house, it's better than living next to a transmission tower or living in Irvine. You know that part of Irvine where they have the bicycle, um, it's like a bicycle path in Woodbridge and then there's all these transmission towers one after another. There I would avoid living too. It's too much energy coming to those properties. If you have no choice, then get that earth comb product. And then eventually the goal is to move. People living there will feel more high strung, more anxious, um, they'll have heart palpitations, heart issues, high blood pressure. So avoid those types of properties. Okay, let's see. Um, high walls, yes. Shrubs for these types of properties are not enough. Okay. And then unstable foundation. So unstable foundation is like a floating um, apartment. So these, do you see how they're not like on the ground? So all the energy flow is going underneath. So if you're like the homeless person that's living underneath these places or in the carport, you'll make some money. But if you're the poor individual that has to live here, it usually indicates money issues, sleep issues, nervousness. So like if this apartment building was my client and he's like, you know, I'm having high turnover, like people come in, sign their year lease and then they're out. And it's so expensive to keep, you know, painting and, doing all the upkeep that I have to do. So what I would recommend is to enclose these and make them garages versus open carports. And the same thing with this, these are rentals in Malibu. So they probably have high turnover. They probably have destructive tenants. There's a lot of costs involved in maintaining these places. So the same thing, I would try to enclose this with like some cement um, block something to help so that the energy is going to the occupants and not the space underneath their home. And then mountains. We do like mountains. We like homes that are supported by mountains on the back because it's like an energetic hug or embrace, like the home is being hugged. Um, and then again, no extreme drop off. So you make sure that there's fencing all the way around the property or shrubs or um, stucco walls. And then water placement. So water placement is super important because water is a conductor of energy. And just know like a little small table fountain is not gonna do anything. Excuse me, I'm talking about like a pool or a large water fountain or a pond or being next to the ocean or being next to a lake. So well-placed water features indicate a lot of money luck, relationship luck, good health. Poorly placed water features can indicate unjust payouts to the IRS, money loss, losing your job, health issues, divorce, that type of thing. So what I tell people is if you have a pool in your home or your client has a pool in their home and they've had mostly bad things happen to them, cover up the pool, just get a pool cover. It'll take care of it. If it's a big fountain that they have and they've had mostly bad things happen since they've been there and you've had a hard time selling the property, turn off the fountain during the water. Quick fix, right? Now, if things have been mostly up and down it could or could not be the water feature. Maybe it's something else. Um, but if things have been great, then you just leave it alone. So you pay attention to their experiences to see what you should do with that water feature. Okay, I'm just going to go through this quickly because I want to spend the rest of our time teaching you guys the system so that um, you can make more money. So the inside of the house is extremely important and there's way more to it than this, but I'm just going to touch on the very basic notes. And then if you want to go into this more in depth, I do do consultations with people either personally or for their clients, but just know um, I'm just touching on the very specific. So the center of the home um, should never have a water feature, 
um, a toilet or a laundry room because they can hurt people's health specifically with the bladder, the kidneys, UTIs, bladder infection, kidney infection, or blood issues. So if you can avoid um, having that in the center of your home or using it if you have it in the center of your home um, and then using toilets that are located somewhere else or relocating the um, washing machine, great. Also in the center, you don't want a staircase or a floor to ceiling fireplace. That can hurt people's joints. So their joints, skeletal issues, scoliosis, um, that type of thing. And then the last thing you don't want in the center of the home is like fire. So a kitchen or a fireplace that can hurt heart, especially with men. So high blood pressure, heart disease, heart attacks, that type of thing. So if you can avoid those elements in the center of the home, great. The center of the home is a floor plan that is drawn to scale. And then you divide it up into nine equal boxes. And if in the very center box, you have the toilet or the laundry room or more than half of the staircase or a fireplace or a kitchen, that truly is the center of the home. So sometimes people will eyeball and be like, oh my God, it's in the center of my home when it's really not. So you need a two scale drawn floor plan and you have to divide it up into nine equal boxes to truly see what's in the center of the home. If you have furniture there, no problem. If you have a wall there, no problem. If there's a bed in there, no problem. You just don't want the things that I mentioned right now, okay? And those are the reasons why. Okay, let me see if I can answer any questions right now really quick. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so if you live in an apartment and you're living above a garage, it will only affect you if it's one of those huge apartment buildings in Irvine, like at Irvine Spectrum. You don't want to be the apartment above the garage because there's too many people coming and going. If you live in an apartment or a condo and it's a single and it's just your car, underneath you're fine if your home if your um, garage is underneath and your bedroom's on top fine but if it's a busy community of people coming and going you don't want to be over the garage i hope that answers that question let me see so the inhabitants of the building are affected by the carport underneath them and so is the landlord. The inhabitants are affected with money as well, and they don't sleep as well. And then the landlord is affected by high turnover and money issues. Okay. Okay, so I will answer more questions at the end, but I just wanna get through this system in case people have to go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the share and make sure that you guys go to the website to get the chart. So let me... So go to my website to get the chart right now so that we can do this system. So if you joined in late, just go to realfengshui.com. Realfengshui.com. So go to realfengshui.com, F-E-N-G-S-H-U-I. Hit the soul blog and then go six down, eight mansions charts. Hit that. And then when you click on them, they'll become bigger. So we're going to use these charts right now to do this system, okay? So let me switch this out now. And go back into the PowerPoint. Okay, so let's go into... Okay. Okay, so we're back in. All right, so I want you guys to look at those charts and I want you to find your GUA number. So a GUA number is a number one through nine, excluding five. And what a GUA number is, it's kind of like your astrology and Western horoscope. It tells us personality traits, parts of the body that you might be vulnerable health-wise, the energy dynamic of how well you'll get along with your spouse, your kids, coworkers, friends. And then the most important thing it does is it gives me, us your four good directions that will affect you with money, with health, and with relationship. So go on the chart with the birthday on it, and you'll see a female section and a male section. So look up the year that you were born. So the chart that you're gonna look at is, let me see if it's on, yeah. 
it's this chart. So this is the chart you're going to look at right now. You're going on my website, realfengshui.com, go on soul blog, six one down, eight mansions charts. So you're going to look up your birthday here. So like if you're born 19, um, you know, 81 and you're a male, you're a one boy. If you're born 1981 and you're a female, you're an Agua. So look up the year that you're born and it give you your Gua number. There's a rule though. So if you're born January to February 3rd, use the previous year as the year you're born because we go off the Chinese calendar. So like for instance, if I was born January 5th, 1982, I would use 1981 as the year that I was born because I'm using the Chinese calendar. So if you're born after February 3rd, so like February 4th until December 31st, you just use the year that you're born, okay? So the only caveat is if you're born January 1 to February 3rd, use the previous year. And then if you have questions about that, um, you can email me or I'll answer them afterwards. Okay, so once you find your QA number, number one through nine, excluding five, we're gonna go back. Um, you're gonna either be part of the East Life group or the West Life group. Okay, so the East Life group are three, four, one, and nine guas, and their good directions are the south, the north, the southeast, and the east. And in a second, I'm going to explain to you what that means. If you're a six, a two, an eight, or a seven, you're part of the West Life group, and your good directions are west, northeast, southwest, and northwest. Again, in a minute, I'm going to explain to you what that means. So, in order to do this system, you're going to see, so this is for East Life group. So if you're a three, a four, a one, or a nine, you're going to look at your numbers that are positive. So a plus 60 is your stability direction. Plus 70 is your relationship direction. Plus 80 is a direction for health. And then plus 90 is your money direction. So if you're a three gua, you look on your chart. So look at the other chart that's in that eight mansions chart section. And then you'll see that your south is your money direction or your plus 90. So I always tell people always try to use the plus 90 or your money direction because that is the best direction for money, for health, for relationships. We call it the millionaire chi. It's VIP supporting you. It's a friend of a friend referring you with a client that you didn't even know that friend of a friend existed, but you got this amazing new listing. It's that type of energy. So always go after that direction. And I'll explain to you in a second what that means. Um, it'll be based on the layout of your home. And I'll show you guys examples or your business. If you can't go after your money or your plus 90 direction, then you're going to use the plus 80 direction, which is health, but it's also a secondary direction for money. So it's health and wealth. If you can't use that direction because of the layout of your home or business, and in a second, I'm gonna show you what that means, then you're gonna use your plus 70 or your relationship direction. This direction is good for single people wanting to meet um, you know, a spouse or just play the field or date around. It's also good for networking. It's good for word of mouth referrals. If you're still farming, which right now would probably be difficult, but you never know. Um, it's good for getting the word out that you're in that neighborhood and people remembering that and being like, oh, I want that person to sell my house. If you can't use those three directions, then you would use the plus 60 or the stability direction. That just keeps you stable in your own energy. So you don't get bad luck, but you don't get good luck. So that's why I always say try to use the other three ones if the layout of your home or business allows you to. And you'll see in a second what that means. So this is for a three, a four, a one, or a nine gua, the East Life group people. And then this is for a six, a two, an eight, or a seven. These are the West Life group people. Okay, so in order to do this, you're going to need a compass and your iPhone is the best one. So if you go in your iPhone, mine is under, um, what's mine under? The activity folder. If you go under the activity folder, you'll see the compass. If not, just download it. It could be under utilities for you. It's different for everyone. But basically, you need to use your iPhone. So if you want to do this in your home or in your office or your business, you stand outside facing out and you hold your iPhone parallel to the ground, but at belly button level. And just hold it straight on. Don't angle it to the right. Don't angle it to the left. Hold it straight on. So your back 
is to the front door of the building, you're staring at the street. And it'll say, like mine right now says 137 degrees southeast. But just know I'm inside. You need to be outside because this is all ran by GPS. So if the GPS can't hit the phone, the reading is going to be incorrect. So make sure you're outside facing out. You're away from cars and metal and there's no overhang above you. So the GPS can really um, hit correctly and you get the right compass reading. So you stand outside facing out. You just need to know the direction that the front door faces or the way the building faces. Because once you know that your front door faces northwest, then you know the back door is southeast and on the side it's northwest and then northeast. Or if the front faces west, you know the back is east and then you know that that side's north and that side's south, right? So you just need to know one point of reference, what direction either the front front of the house or your building faces or your door or your business, whatever you're working with. Okay, so always use an iPhone. Um, Androids are not accurate at all. I've had clients that have used them and it's, I don't know what's wrong with them, but it doesn't work. But the iPhone or iPad works the best. So use that or get a digital compass. You can get them on Amazon. That'll be more accurate. So these are the degrees that it comes up with. Um, those are the ones that you would use. Okay, so just know, I already described this, but the Guan number um, gives you your four good directions. It tells you general characteristics about yourself and then like your relationship dynamic with your friends, coworker, spouse. So once you have located your four good directions, because those are what we're working with now, either your plus 90 money, your plus 80 health and wealth, plus 70 relationship, or plus 60 stability, we're going to use them consistently every single day of your life in every building that you're in so that you get good luck, either with money, with health, with relationships, or a combination of all three. Okay, so the best way to do this is, so once you have your compass reading of whatever building you're working with, whether it's your home, your office, a client's house, um, the, I don't know, the, um, what's it called, the conference room in your office, then you'll know where all the directions are. And then once you use that chart to find your good directions, you'll know how to orient yourself. So this is how you're going to use the directions. You're going to use the directions. So this explains to you the good directions, what they are, and then the negative. We're not going to focus on the negative, just the good. Okay, so here's your little key. So once you have your good directions, you know your Guan number, you're gonna start sleeping with your head to your good direction. So if I'm a nine Gua and east is my plus 90 or my money direction per that chart, I'm gonna start sleeping with my head to the east. So pretend like this wall is the east wall. I would put my headboard on this east wall and start sleeping with my head to the east. It's not where your feet is, it's where your head is. Now, if I'm working, whether it's in my home office or in my business or a conference room, or I'm trying to negotiate with a client, I'm going to figure out where the east is. That's why you need your iPhone compass to figure out where the directions are. So I'm going to face myself to the east when I'm working, when I'm typing, when I'm on my computer, when I'm on my phone call. If I have to negotiate with someone in a conference room, I'm going to get there a few minutes early, figure out where the east is so that I can face that direction to give me a competitive advantage or an upper hand. And that's why I want you to always use your plus 90 direction because yes, it's money, but it's every good thing life has to offer. So if the layout of your home or business or conference room or Starbucks or wherever you're meeting makes it so that you can face that direction, you always face that direction, period. End of story. Don't even look at the other directions. Um, when you're spending long periods of time sitting down at home, watching TV, reading a book, Instagramming, um, FaceTime, like whatever you're doing, sit so that you're facing your plus 90 or your money direction. Orient your furniture so that you're facing that direction. Again, when you negotiate with clients, make sure you get there early, you face that good direction. If you're trying to land a new client, they're at your home, you're at their home. Take a compass reading, stand outside facing out, figure out which direction their home's in. And then when you go into the living room or whatever room, find the seat that faces your money direction. Obviously don't do it if it puts your back 
to your client because then you're gonna look like a fool and they're gonna be like, what are you doing? Do it if it makes sense. And if it can't be the money direction, then use your health direction plus 80. If it can't be that one, the relationship direction plus 70. So the point is you're always using these directions, whether in your home, your office, or you're gonna go see a client. Start walking in and out of doors that face one of your four good directions exclusively. Whether it's at your home and you have to start using the back door or the side door or the garage door or the front door, whatever door it is, every single day you're living there, you're using the door that faces one of your four good directions. Same thing if you're going into a building and working in corporate buildings have entrances on every direction. So there's no excuse. Always walk in and out of a door that faces your good direction. Same thing going into a suite. I've seen the suites for real estate offices. There's tons of ins and outs. Find the sweet door that faces one of your four good directions. You have multiple opportunities to utilize your good direction so that you can start making more money, closing more deals, negotiating easier, getting your asking price, getting more clients, increasing your profits, increasing relationships, improving your health. So just know that this is one way to do it. When I consult with clients, I use this and I use the energy chart of the home or business, because when you combine both, you get the best result. But for you guys, you're just using this for yourself. I ask you don't use this for your clients, because if you screw up, they're going to be mad at you. So I just say that you use this on yourself. So here's some examples. So let me just scooch this out of the way and I'm going to answer questions too. Okay. So this would be for a seven gua. Say this is your bedroom and you figured out that the east right here is the front of your home and northwest is your plus 90 or your money direction. Put your head to the northwest. Make sure you have a headboard. If you're sleeping to a corner, you want like a plant or a soji screen back here because energy is most intense in the corner. So you might have sleep issues. So make sure solid headboard and then a plant here to absorb that energy from that corner. This is great for a seven gua. It's your plus 90, it's your money direction, your millionaire chi, your every good thing life has to offer. If you're a six gua, west is your money direction. So you would put your headboard on the west wall. If you're sleeping to a window, just know in this day and age, it's fine to sleep with your head underneath the window. The windows have improved from 40 years ago, of those old crappy aluminum windows. That's not an issue anymore. The reason why it was an issue, because you used to feel the draft and people wouldn't sleep well or they would be more prone to getting sick. As long as you have a headboard, you have curtains, you're fine. You can sleep to a window. And then for your desk. So you, when you're sitting down, whether it's at your desk or your couch or your chair, you're facing the direction. So when you're sleeping, your head's there. So for instance, if you're a seven gua and this is your home office, you would angle your desk to, to face the Northwest. So now you're staring at the direction versus your head sleeping to it. And then I would recommend here in this corner, if you're truly angled to put a plant to help absorb that energy so that you can concentrate and really focus on your work and you won't feel scattered. Um, if you're in an office, like at work where you it's fixed, the cubicles are fixed and your manager won't let you change workstation or office, see if you can move your laptop. So your furniture is stationary, it's fixed, but see if you can move your laptop to face your good direction or see if you can work in the conference room with your laptop and face your good direction or just work from home if you're able to do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer questions and I ask that you use the Q&A feature on here because it's so much easier. So I want to, you know, open it up to help you so that you're able to utilize either this system or if you have any questions of anything that we've discussed on the slides, um, just let me know so that you get more clarity and just know you can go to my website. I'm going to screen share this again in case people logged on late. So hold on, let me just screen share this. Um, hold on, let me stop this. Okay, so you can go on my website. Just go to realfengshui.com. Or you could do real feng shui solutions, but it's longer. So realfengshui.com. 
you go to soul blog. And then the sixth one down is the eight mansions charts. So these are the charts that you're going to use to find your Guam number and then your good directions. So if you look at this chart and you click on it twice, it'll be bigger. Um, once you find your Guam number, you just look on here for your Guam number and then you can see your plus 90 is your money direction. So for a three, it's the south, for the four, north, one, southeast, nine, east, and then so on. If you can't use that direction because your layout of your home or business doesn't work, then find your plus 80 or your health direction or your plus 70 relationship direction or your plus 60 stability direction. So you have all the directions on this chart that will work for you. Those are the ones that you would utilize to give you more luck with money, with health and relationships. And that's why I always go after the plus 90 first. Um, another thing you can do is if you sign up for the newsletter, and I barely send out one a month. I've been sending them out like quarterly, just because I know people get annoyed with excuse me, with um, emails, but all the ones that I send are just tips and tricks. Um, you sign up here, the people that sign up, I'll give one person my book, Hollywood's Fatal Feng Shui, which let me see if the link is over here. You can get it on Amazon. And it's an in-depth examination of 10 celebrity homes. It's right here on Amazon. I'll give away one of those if you sign up for the email newsletter and that's on the website at the home page. <clears throat> I also teach classes too and I do consultations. And then if you wanna contact me, you can either email jennifer at realfengshui.com or um, call me or go on the website. Okay, so let's start answering some of these questions. So can you help me figure out my good directions? I just went through it right now. If you're still having difficulty, then email me. If my spouse and I have different GUA numbers, how do you arrange the furniture? For example, our bed. That's a good question. So um, how you would do that is if your spouse or your husband or your wife, you guys are all three, four, one, and nine GUAs, then whatever direction you use will benefit them. If you're opposite life group, so one's east life group, one's west life group, so a three is with an eight or, you know, an eight is with a one qua. Then you're going to have to do trial and error if you're not going to consult or hire someone to help you, which means that if your current bed position is working for both of you guys, you guys both sleep well, you're healthy and you're making money, you leave it. If one of you is suffering and the other one isn't, then you're gonna switch the bed. And you'll do it for at least three months and see how it affects you both. And then if it's still not working, do it again. So you're gonna have to do a lot of trial and error if you're opposite life groups. But you just know that if you hire someone like me, you don't have to sleep with your husband's foot in your face. It's not like that. There is a direction that will work for both of you. Um, that system is more refined and I teach that in my classes because it's more difficult to for people to understand um next question would you please put <clears throat> back the chart of degrees for each direction i can but that's not really going to help you because if you use your iphone the directions will be on there so you don't need that chart of degrees and then let's see over here Okay, I think that's it. Does anyone else have any other questions? Um, let's see. So we answered the landlord one in the carport. Okay, so just want clarity on the carport building again. So the landlord and people directly over the carport are affected, but not the people who live further in. Correct. So if you don't live over a carport, then it will be better than if you live directly over a carport. And what about buildings with courtyard pools? Where does your door face? Wait, where are your doors facing the pool? Um, it depends on what direction the building faces. 
if the pool is good or not and if your door direction is good or not. Does that make sense? So we look at the, if you live in an apartment or in a condo, we look at the facing direction of the complex and then we look at the facing direction of your door. And so we pull up the natal chart to see what it indicates and then we add in your birthday information to see how you'll personally be affected. So that answer is, it depends. And then is it bad if your door is facing the pool? Um, it's not necessarily bad. It just, again, depends on the facing orientation of the building and what the pool indicates. Um, website is black and white. What about Android users? Um, I'm not sure what that means. Can you clarify? If you're an Android user, you have to buy a digital compass. So I'm assuming you're talking about the compass, just buy one on Amazon <clears throat> or borrow a friend's iPhone that's like in your office or that lives in your home and you can use the compass on there. And then my website is black and white, but there's color on there too. So I'm not sure what that question was. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Does anyone else have any other questions? You can do it in the Q&A. If not, I wanna say thank you so much for joining. And I hope that this was informative and just know that like we're just barely picking off the surface that real feng shui is very um, involved and there's so many different elements that we look at, but at least you kind of understand now how it really works. You have a general overview of how everything is and you can always email me um, call me, contact me through my website, whatever works for you guys. I'm here to help and to uh, make sure your businesses are profitable. Okay, I think that's it. All right, any last minute questions? If not, I'm going to sign off. Are you guys okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you guys think? It's so hard not being able to talk to you guys. I love talking to you guys, but it's okay. I get it. This is the day and age we're living in now. This too shall pass, my friends. All right, loves. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to send you off into the world. Hopefully, I will hear from you. And whatever you guys need, I'm here to support you. And I look forward to doing these in the future. Height of fence. So the height of fence should be at least six feet high if it's in the backyard or on the sides. In the front, obviously, you wouldn't do it that high. You would do three feet, but at least six feet high. All right, loves. Have a great rest of the day, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.